everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Forum BX257, here to bring you another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review, and today I'll be taking a look at the Cobra Trainer, the 1987 Big Boa. Now, like a lot of 1987 and 1988 characters, he makes no cartoon appearances. Unfortunately, Big Boa doesn't make any comic book appearances, at least not in the Marvel comic run. He does, however, make a first appearance in Blackthorn Publishing's G.I. Joe in 3D, number 4. I do have to say that there is a bit of a controversy, at least among collectors, of how this character actually comes to be created in the first place. I've made a completely separate video about that, so please refer to that. Um, I'm not going to be discussing it here, as it just takes a too long of an explanation. And I'd rather just focus on the action figure itself. Big Boa comes with the following accessories. A punching bag with some rather hilarious detail on the front there. And a stand. He also comes with what the card refers to flex steel mesh boxing gloves. Have a nice painted cobra symbol on there. And a lot of nice little detail on there. They're also rather rubbery, so they fit over the hands rather securely. What the contents list doesn't list, however, is the hose that's on the side of his helmet. It's a unique hose only used on Big Boa. And you can see that there is a little triangular bit here on this peg which shows you that that's the front end for his helmet. Despite being a fairly common figure and not an entirely popular one, it is kind of difficult to find a mint condition complete Big Boa on the aftermarket. You'll often find the punching bag without its stand. The hose on the side of his head could be missing. And what's worse, you have left and right side boxing gloves. So if you're missing one, you have to be sure of which side uh, boxing glove you're trying to find on the aftermarket. And of course the Cobra symbol, that rubs off rather easily. So finding two of them with this still on there is a rather difficult task. One very interesting thing about the sculpt of his physique, however, are his arms. Like I noted in the um, in my G.I. Joe vlog, The Mystery of Big Boa, his arms are actually unique to him. And it's mostly because of these shoulders. The shoulders go out really far. And that is quite unique. Even when you have very muscular arms like the fridge has, the shoulders are still those those normal size from the G.I. Joe buck that they use. However, big boas are just enormous. Hockey, football, biathlon, martial arts, baseball, basketball, uh, women's swim team coach. I guess that counts, right? Okay, so there might have been a lot of G.I. Joe figures which had sports-related themes or backgrounds, and there were very few Cobras, Big Boa being pretty much the only focused one. However, that wasn't the only one who had some sport-related stuff. The 1989 Frag Viper had a Jaila Sesta here, a sort of a basket um, cylinder type thing which you place a ball, in his case, a grenade. And of course, the most obvious one, Thrasher of the Dreadnoughts, who came with a modified lacrosse stick. So, just who is Big Boa's opposite number on the G.I. Joe team? Now, as a Cobra trainer, he's supposed to be kind of like a drill sergeant, but it's really hard to take him seriously with the equipment that he's given here. Not to say that boxing 
isn't a very difficult sport and you can't learn something from it, you totally can. But to me, it's so very focused on that one thing, which to me is why I won't compare him to Sergeant Slaughter, let's say. Instead, he seems more in line with how the 1987 Mail-Away Fridge seemed to be depicted. And he was a physical trainer as well, but not really a drill sergeant. He was a final obstacle when training the G.I. Joes. Basically, he was focused on one particular aspect of that training. And I think Big Boa is kind of like that too. One sport-related Joe who wasn't in my lineup was the 1989 Raider driver Hot Seat, who ironically had a boxing background. So if you absolutely insist on putting your big boa in a boxing environment or display and want him to face off against a Joe, that would be the Joe action figure to do it against. However, Hot Seat doesn't look like a boxer. He has no sport-related uh, look to him at all. It's only really mentioned in his file card. So if you wanted something more visually appealing as a boxer, I would go with the 1988 Rolling Thunder driver, Armadillo. Now, he totally looks like a boxer, even though there's nothing to suggest that on his file card. It's kind of strange. It's almost like Armadillo and Hot Seat's file cards were kind of uh, switched around. On the plus side, you can probably find some of Big Boa's spare boxing gloves on the aftermarket with the Cobra symbol completely rubbed off. And if you, even if you can't, you can probably find them listed under Balrog of the Street Fighter 2 lines. He had a reissue of these boxing gloves completely without the Cobra symbol on them to begin with. And they could be given to Armadillo to complete his look. Let's face it, Big Boa is a boxing figure in a military line. He's just never going to be that popular with the general G.I. Joe collecting public. Even though he can be displayed quite dynamically like this, he's just by himself. You put him with all the other G.I. Joe figures, and he looks terribly out of place. To be honest, I don't display him like this either. But, unlike a lot of other sport-related G.I. Joes, Big Boa can actually be fixed rather easily. Yep, and that's all there is to it. Just take away his accessories, and what do you have left? Is there anything sport-related or boxing-related that he looks like? Um, no, actually, really, he doesn't. Especially his helmet. Now, I've never really understood what the point of this hose is, or in fact, why he has such an elaborate helmet to begin with. It's really cool, to be honest, and really gives him the look of, well, maybe a pilot or a driver, which is pretty much how I use him. If you are going to be using your big boa as a vehicle driver, please be aware that he has a very big, bulky, non-removable helmet, which means that he is slightly taller than the average Joe. So if headspace in the vehicle that you're choosing to use him with is a concern, Big Boa is really not the best choice for that. However, I would always suggest using Big Boa in an, in an open-ended vehicle anyway, because he really do want to show off that magnificent and an intimidating helmet anyway.
Frag Viper with his JLA Basque Sesta. So if you absolutely, absolutely, bleh. well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.